Hi guys, it's Kat. Today, I'm going to show you how to build this modern marble and stained wood kitchen island. This is such a fun project and the best part is, the sink actually works with running water. Don't worry, it's much simpler than it looks and adds such a cool effect to any miniature scene. Let's get started. First, let's build a counter. For that, I'm using 1 8 of an inch thick craft plywood. I draw and cut out a 6 inch by 3 inch rectangle. Because this wood panel is already 6 inches wide, I only need to make one cut. Use a utility knife to cut the wood on both sides several times. Then you'll be able to easily snap the wood. Because I want this to be a waterfall edge island, I cut another identical rectangle. Take one and cut it in half. These will make up the sides of the island. Glue them to each side of the counter with wood glue. This is the basic shape of the island. Before we paint it, let's cut the hole for the sink. For that, I use a condom and container. You can find these pretty much anywhere. Flip it upside down and trace the shape of the container onto the countertop. Then measure and draw interior lines 1 8 of an inch away from the perimeter. To cut out this shape, I first drill holes all along the lines. You can use an electric drill to speed this process up. Then just pop the piece out. To clean up the rough edges, I just use these two metal files. The flat one for the sides, and then the round one for the corners. There, that's perfect. Let's get to painting. The first step is to cover the entire piece in gesso. This helps smooth out the wood, hides discoloration, and provides better adhesion for paint. Once that's dry, I go over it with a coat of white acrylic paint. For the marbling effect, I'll be using these acrylic paints. To apply the color, rip pieces off a sponge in various sizes. Dab light gray and silver all across the counters. Then for the veining, take a piece of sponge that has a really nice sharp edge. Lightly dab dark gray paint in one direction to create various lines. Use a light hand here. For a shiny seal, use polyacrylic water-based varnish. You can also use epoxy or resin for this. If you see any brush strokes after it dries, make sure to sand between coats. I added about 3 coats for this look. Now it's time for the sink. Grab the little condiment container again and clean it out. Draw a hole into the center for a drain and then paint it. I use metallic silver spray paint on both sides. With some E6000 glue, position the sink right under the counter. This is optional, but I take a tiny silver eyelid for the drain hole. It just creates a cleaner look. The counter is done, so let's move on to the cabinets next. I'll be using both giant craft sticks and super jumbo craft sticks for this. The giant ones are one and a quarter inch in width, and the super jumbo ones are one inch in width. With the giant ones, I cut out a five and a half inch section. Cut two of these and glue them together to create a panel. Do the same thing for the super jumbo sticks. Glue these panels together at a 90 degree angle with the giant sticks as the back vertical piece. Glue another set of the super jumbo sticks together. Then cut out two 3 inch sections. For reference, each rectangle is 2 inches by 3 inches. Glue them to each side of the cabinet. To finish the back, take another piece and line it up. Cut off any excess wood. Perfect fit! Cut out two more 2 inch by 3 inch rectangles made from Super Jumbo sticks. Glue them together for thickness. Then simply position it vertically right in the middle of the cabinet. Next up is the drawer front. I take another Super Jumbo craft stick and cut out a 2 and 3 4 inch section. Make 6 of these. For the drawer bottoms, make another Super Jumbo craft stick panel. Cut out a 2 and 5 eighths of an inch section. Check to make sure it fits into the bottom of the cabinet. Then slide it in and glue a drawer front onto it. Pull it out and you're ready to finish the drawer. For that, we'll need some regular jumbo popsicle sticks. These are a bit thinner at 3 fourths of an inch in width. Cut out two 2 inch sections and one 2 and a half inch section. Glue the shorter pieces on the sides and a long one at the back. Super easy. Place the drawer back in a cabinet. Before we can make the next drawer, first draw lines above the sides of the bottom cabinet. Then take some coffee stirrers and cut out two lengths just under 2 inches long. These will act as the rails for the next drawer. Glue them right above the lines we drew. Place another drawer bottom on the rails and repeat this process until all three drawers are finished. For the right side, add a drawer front to the top with glue. We can't put a real one here because this is where the sink will be. The last two drawer fronts will create one tall drawer. Glue these pieces together into a panel. Then add rails at the bottom of the cabinet. Add a drawer bottom to the rails and glue on the big drawer front. 
from another giant craft stick, cut out two two inch lengths, glue them to the sides, and cut out two three fourths inch sections and two one and a quarter inch sections. Add the short pieces to each side of the back and the longer pieces in front of them. And cut one last one inch section and close off the area. Fit it into place. Our cabinet bill is all done. Now it's time for some color. To make a nice dark stain, I mix dark brown acrylic paint with some water. Brush it onto all the drawer fronts. Add the color and layers until you achieve the color you like. Once these are stained, turn the cabinet around and stain the entire back. For a glossy look, I add on a coat of polychromic varnish. Before varnishing the drawers, let's add on the handles. I take some craft matchsticks and paint them with gold acrylic paint. Split them in half and make five of these in total. Glue one to the middle of each drawer front. Once all the handles are on, add on the varnish. I love how shiny this cabinet is. All you need to do now is to slip the marble countertop onto the cabinet. The structure is all done. The last step is to make the faucet and the plumbing. For the faucet, first make a hole right behind the sink. I drew a tiny hole and then gradually increase the size of the bit until the hole is big enough for the faucet. For the actual faucet, I'll be using these thin noodle tube beads. They're made of metal and have a narrow opening. In order to get it curved into a faucet shape, I place the bead over a half inch round dowel and hammer one end around the curve. As you can see, the bead's silver coating started peeling off. We'll fix this later. Hammer the other end straight. This is the final shape of the faucet. If you don't have these metal beads, you can also use a thin curved straw. These beads have a seam on one side, and I want to make sure these are sealed because we'll be running water through it. For that, I use some Gorilla 2 part epoxy. Mix equal parts from each two and apply it to the seam of the bead. While that dries, take another bead and hammer it straight. Then just attach this piece to the bottom of the faucet with more epoxy. While that dries, cut a short length of straw and glue it right beneath the drain. This will help the water drain when we want it. Throw the faucet through the countertop and make a mark where the pipe meets the bottom of the cabinet. Drill a hole in that spot. I take an eyelet and glue it right above the hole. This is what you're looking for. Let me show you how the running water will work. I'll be using this needle tip squeeze bottle for the water pressure. Fill the bottle with water and stick the needle tip through the bottom of the faucet pipe. See how the water comes up the pipe and through the faucet? Before we install it, let's make a handle. Take another eyelet and a flat end toothpick. Loop the eyelet onto the toothpick and cut it at the 1 8 of an inch mark. Cut a piece from the pointy end and glue that vertically onto the other piece. The handle is now able to rotate in the eyelet. Glue this onto the pipe 1 half inches from the top of the faucet. Here I'm cutting another piece of straw because my pipe was a bit too short to reach the bottom of the cabinet. Slice down one side of the straw. Then push the ends closed to tighten the circumference. Glue it onto the pipe with more epoxy. For the silver color, I'm using the metallic silver spray paint again. Install it by simply threading it through the countertop until it reaches the eyelet at the bottom. Add epoxy to the bottom to prevent any water from seeping out. Almost done guys, we just need a bucket under the drain to catch all the water that drains from the sink. Take the big drawer and cut out a third of the wood from the center bottom. This is where the bucket will sit. For the bucket itself, I'm using a clear piece of plastic packaging. Draw 3 quarters of an inch square. Then draw 1 inch by 3 quarters of an inch rectangle on each side. Cut it out and fold the rectangles up to meet each other. Glue the sides together with epoxy for a watertight seal. Test it to make sure it holds water without leaking. When this is done, the bucket will be right underneath the drain to catch all the water that comes from the sink. The drain pipe is able to direct the water straight into the bucket. Set the bucket onto a low platform at the back of the drawer and slide it into place. This kitchen island is all complete. I love the style of this island, but you can use the same techniques to create one that suits any style you prefer. I hope you guys like this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did, and make sure to subscribe for more. I'll see you next time. Bye!